So I got a couple of gas law demos for you here. Uh, the first gas law demo is going to be Avogadro's law. Uh, and here's the idea. Basically, Avogadro's law says that the number of moles of a gas is going to depend on its volume. So we could say that this was one mole of gas. If this was one mole of gas, then we should be able to predict what two moles of gas should look like. Should be about twice the volume, which I think that green balloon looks like it's twice the volume of the blue balloon. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that off. Now what should half of a mole look like? Well, it should like about, look up like it's about half the volume of the blue balloon. So let's see if I can get one. I want, I want a nice colorful one. We're going to go for orange. That looks like it's about half the size. So we're going to call this half a mole. We're going to call the orange one half a mole. We're going to call the blue one one mole. And we'll call the green one uh, two moles. Okay. Now just because we call this well, just because we call this one mole, does that mean it's one mole? Uh, think for a second. How much space should one mole of a gas take up at standard temperature and standard pressure? That's right should take up 22.4 liters. Okay. That's that much room. Obviously, we're talking about these balloons being fractions of moles. But that's the, uh, that's the basic concept behind Avogadro's law. Uh, this is the Boyle's law demonstration. We've got a bell jar here. Uh, it is hooked up to a, uh, to a valve here that can allow me to uh, suck out all of the air out of the bell jar. We're going to start out, start out with pretty standard demonstration. We're going to start out by putting a couple of balloons in here. One balloon, two balloons, and three balloons. You may recognize these from the Avogadro's Law demonstration. Just going to make sure that that's nice and uh, sealed. All right, and we're going to go ahead and pull a vacuum on it. We're starting to decrease the pressure on the balloons by removing the volume of air that's in there. Decreasing the pressure should increase the volume of the balloons, and you can see that that's happening rather nicely. Okay, now what I can do now is I can actually release the valve and that's going to let all the air back out so the balloon should get small. Ooh, hey, that broke one balloon. Now there's room for the others to expand as more air gets sucked out. Oh, and we only have one left. Maybe I won't move that valve yet. Well, it probably would be best if I went ahead and moved the valve. Let me shut off the vacuum tube. All right, the vacuum pump is off, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to release the pressure. Think for a moment, what should happen when I release this valve and I allow air to come back into the bell jar? Increase in pressure should decrease the volume of the balloon. And again, that sound that you just heard, that rush of air, wasn't air rushing out of the bell jar, it was air rushing back into the bell jar through that valve. Giant marshmallows are great fun at campfires, but have you ever wondered how they're made? It's an application of Boyle's Law. They take regular sized marshmallows and they make them larger. Uh, marshmallows have air in them, right? So all you have to do is you have to decrease the amount of pressure on the air inside the marshmallow and the volume should increase. Let's try it out. I'm going to take a whole bunch of normal, everyday, common marshmallows. Hopefully we can see those on the camera. i take a whole bunch of them. You know what? We'll put the big one in there just for fun. Okay. We'll see if we can zoom in. Turn on the bell jar. There we go. 
I think we can see those just fine since we zoomed in. Turn on the we'll put the bell jar on. Remember, do not try this at home. This is for science. And we're gonna turn on the turn on the bell jar, turn on the vacuum pump, close the valve, and watch as these marshmallows grow to campfire roaster size. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Most definitely bigger. All right, now that they've gotten nearly as large as we're going to get them, now all we have to do is bag them up. So we've got to uh, try and get them out. Oh, hold on. Uh, pressure is not letting me do that. We'll release the pressure. Huh. As the pressure increases again, it looks like the marshmallows are decreasing in size. Still tasty. So after a long, hard day of teaching, there's nothing better than a nice bag of Frito-Lay. Right, Frito-Lay, Frito-Lay, yep, yeah, uh, Fritos, Fritos brand, this is Frito-Lay stuff. Uh, I did not get uh, anything from the Frito-Lay company for filming this. I'll give you my address later. Um, but uh, at any rate, uh, I'm really too tired to even bother opening these bags, so I'm going to open them with science. Put them in the jet bell jar. Oh, this is a better zoom. Actually, this will turn out better if we can see it from the side. There we go. How's that view? That's a much better view. Okay. Vacuum pump on. Bags inflating. just because I found a mini bag of marshmallows and I didn't know what would happen. So I decided I'd film it. Let's find out. It's a mini bag of mini marshmallows at that. We'll zoom in. Would you look at that? The bag is expanding. Oh, oh no, uh, uh, uh. Something bad is going to happen, I just know it. Mm. Watch the marshmallows carefully. They may start expanding. Actually, judging from a regular package of marshmallows, I can see that they have definitely have it. And just because you thought that the bell jar has no real application in real life, this is a pair of bell jars. Okay, we've got one bell jar over here that has its own pump on it. Make sure I get that nice and flat. And I've got another bell jar over here that has its own pump on it. Matter of fact, one of the great part about bell jars here, or in this case suction cups, uh, is that the Earth's atmosphere is actually pushing down on each of these two suction cups because there's close to a complete vacuum on there. So we can actually calculate, by taking a look at this, we can calculate how, uh, the amount of force necessary to pull straight up on this. Your geometry teacher told you, actually taught you how to figure this out. Uh, first, we have to measure the radius. Then we have to find the area of the entire circle here. Uh, let's see, that's pi r squared if I remember right. 
so we take pi r squared and we multiply that, to set, set the square, number of square inches, we multiply that by 14.7. That's how much pressure, that's how much force I need to lift one of these. Now the nice part is this has two, so it's twice that amount. According to the box, it says 175 pounds is the maximum load capacity. That's a lot of force. The question is, how do I take a hard-boiled egg and get it in here? The answer is not as hard as you think it is. The gas law involved here, uh, you could argue that it's Charles' law, and you could argue that it's uh, Guy and Sach's law. Either way that you argue it, uh, you, you're dealing with a similar situation. Uh, in order to get the egg into the bottle, which, by the way, the egg does not fit, I did uh, take the shell off the egg, but otherwise it's just a regular old hard-boiled egg. Uh, my methodology is this. Fire. Okay. The fire goes in here. It eats up. Well, it removes... Well, watch that. All right. What the fire does, uh, there are a couple ex possible explanations. One of the things that the fire does is it uses up a lot of the oxygen, turns it into carbon dioxide gas. Uh, that, um, uh, if we go by that way, the number of moles has changed here, uh, which means that the pressure is going to go down inside this flask. Other people like to claim, uh, and I kind of like it this way, uh, that the temperature of the gas inside is really, really hot. When I put that egg on there, uh, it puts the fire out and it starts to cool down. That means that the pressure inside is going to decrease, uh, which means that the pressure on the outside pushes the egg in. Uh, now the real question is, how in the world do you get an egg out of a bottle? So how to get the egg out of the bottle? Increase the volume in the flask, and you're going to uh, increase the amount of pressure inside. And there we go. Ivory soap, the one that floats. Ever wonder what happens when you microwave it? Well, we can think about it through Charles' law. Uh, ivory soap floats because it's a whipped soap. They whip air bubbles into it. Uh, so just think about Charles' law for a second here. What's going to happen to the gas bubbles if the temperature increases? Hmm. Let's find out, shall we? Set the microwave for a minute. Uh, oh, by the way, don't try this at home. You'll ruin your own microwave. You can see on the right side of the soap right now what's going on. As you can see there, uh, the soap is a little bit warm, but it's extremely light and fluffy now. All right, you want to think about this one through Guy Le Sachs Law. Uh, what happens if I take a hot gas uh, and I cool it down rather rapidly? Hmm, let's see. I guess that's what happens. And my final ultimate challenge for gas laws. How is it that I blew up the balloon inside of the Erlenmeyer flask?